Hello, welcome back to From Soft Serve, and today it's a it's a video I've wanted to make for a while, which is basically recommended mods for Bloodborne, uh, since we can obviously play it on PC now. Um, mostly fine. Uh, people have been asking a lot of like, well, what mods do you recommend, uh, and like to get it to properly be set up, not even for like how to make it look the best, but like. How does it run decently, and are there issues that can be fixed? Like, most of the uh, issues have been fixed. Uh, the first recommendation I'll have as a link in the description is the specific build uh, that I'm using. I downloaded it yesterday, and it's been the best one I've had yet. And it is one of the Tessellation builds from Baggins183. Uh, I'll have a link directly to it so you can download it. Uh, and it's the one that enables uh, the fire effects on the torches, the fog, the, basically all the visual effects are here and in play and work correctly. And performance is good. And like on my three hour stream yesterday, uh, I only had one crash. Now you do see a little bit of flickering there. I am not entirely sure what that is. I've seen that on other builds as well. So I'm not entirely sure what that is but beyond that oh my god he scared me um i always like to start my videos in the game if that makes sense um but yeah you basically have the full feature set and it runs really well um for me i don't get a steady 60 fps but largely that i think is because of uh my rtx 2060 is pretty old at this point and so it's kind of long in the tooth and just isn't isn't cutting it uh, my processor is a 5700x uh ryzen of course and that is not the problem. Uh, you will see a little bit of rainbow effect from the blood occasionally, and it, and it does go away uh, after a little bit, usually. Maybe not for this video. Yeah, there you go. So the blood uh, effects are also mostly working, and then you'll have like a small rainbow effect for just like a little bit here and there. Um, but yeah, let's get to the actual setup here, uh, and let me quit out of the game. Okay, so first things first, this is the specific build uh, that I use. And so that way you know you're getting the most up-to-date, at least for me, and it has all the feature set that like I need for Bloodborne. Uh, and you'll see down here there's links for Windows 64. The QT means it has a graphical user interface, so you're going to want the QT ones. Um, and there's Mac OS, Linux, Ubuntu. Uh, I'm on Windows. So I tend to use this one, and you can hit download. Now for GitHub, you do need an account. It's free. You just make an account, then you can download. Uh, I gave the link out on stream yesterday, and, and some people were like, I can't download it. And I forgot, you need an account on GitHub. But no big deal, sign up for it. Um, and then, uh, yeah, use that build. And one tip I would give people is when you download a new build and you already have like an old one, uh, so here's the actual like files uh, for this build. Uh, so what I usually do is I go to my old build, wherever it was, and I copy these things. Uh, I copy, mainly it's the user folder. If you copy the user folder from your prior installation of Shad PS4, that will copy over where the games are stored, uh, your settings, and your save files for Bloodborne specifically, but for other games. And so I just copy that over and, and dump it into the new one I download. Easy peasy. I believe the other option you have is to just copy the shad ps4.exe and then dump that in the current build you were using prior because that's where it stores all the like updates and whatnot. But for some reason, I'm superstitious. <laughs> and so I will just copy the user folder into a new one. So I have like 500 different shad ps4 folders uh, or downloads. It's a bit much, um, but yeah. So I would definitely recommend that. Now, if we go to Nexus Mods, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then we go to Bloodborne. I will show you the mods that I download. There might be some new ones I haven't seen. So more blood for Bloodborne. Oh, new work in progress, snow fix. Oh, that's cool. I haven't checked this out, actually. Uh, added snow partial fix. Oh. Huh. Oh, enemy ragdoll removal. That's interesting. Yeah, that would definitely improve performance. That's cool. Um, okay, so if we go to popular all time, uh, we will actually see that, yeah, we have my mod there. Uh, we don't need the PC SFX fix. That's for like Intel CPUs, it seems to be. Um, 
Now there is this one, uh, Vertex Explosion Fix. Basically what it does is it removes the vertex explosions that can happen, which you'll see in this screenshot here where it just like juts out of the character. Uh, and they found out that that's due to the face customization and how that works. So this basically just disables it. Um, so I have used this um, initial version for testing. And so basically you just download it. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Uh, and of course I'll have links in the description for everything. Um, so we downloaded that. I've already downloaded it before once because I'm actually using it. Um, so now the way they have this mod packaged is fantastic because it's actually stored in the DVD root PS4, which is actually your main Bloodborne folder. That's where everything is stored. So if you want, you can literally just copy over the DVD root uh, underscore PS4, copy that over, and it'll say, oh, do you want to overwrite? Great. Uh, if we dive in here, you'll notice that what it does is it's inside the parts folder. Um, so you don't really need to worry about what these files are, but basically these are like the face customization files. Um, and so, yeah, but really I would just recommend copy over your DVD root PS4 and then overwrite uh, when it asks. And then now you have the vertex explosion fix, which is a good thing because I used to get the vertex explosions a decent amount of time and it was, it, it was kind of annoying. So other than that, um, we have a Kanehurst snow fix where most of the snow in Kanehurst just doesn't display correctly and it looks like really fucking weird. Uh, and so you can actually download uh, the Kanehurst snow fix if you are doing Kanehurst. If you've already done Kanehurst, then don't worry about it. Um, but this basically has, oh, it's the default draw param. Yeah, so part of this that is difficult is if you're using my remaster mod, this will kind of undo the GParam change. So this is one where like, if you're not using my mod, you can use this. It, it does unfortunately uh, interact between the two, but that one's a similar one where you just copy it over, easy peasy, lemon squeezy, um, but it's not the most important one. The most important one is a RAM spike workaround. Ooh, there's actually an update. Ooh, okay, so I haven't actually, done the update yet. So we have half cloth physics improved with blood. Yeah, so I use the half one. So basically what it does is it enables the cloth flags for hunter armors. So your, the player's armors uh, will actually still have the cloth physics, but the enemies will not. Uh, and then it restores the cloth physics to Maria, Gascoigne. Uh, oh, okay, so let's download this one. This one I'm actually going to literally install because it's a newer version of it. Um, okay, so let's do that, dot zip. Oh, maybe I have already installed this. <laughs> uh, now part of the problem <laughs> with this, uh, again, is if you're using my remaster mod, I have a custom material file that is what they're also doing here. Um, mine is an optional download. Mine is not included with my mod by default, so I don't think it's actually going to uh, mess with a lot of people. Um, so basically, we're going to extract it, and it's going to think about it. And you'll see it has three folders here. So it has parts for bodies, because these are actually the bosses that they re-enabled it on. We have the material file, and then we have the character, uh, which controls a lot of the enemies. Um, and so I do recommend usually backing up your Bloodborne files. Luckily for me, I have a whole, I have an entire backup. I have an entire unmodded version of Bloodborne that I just keep uh, separate. So if we go to our Bloodborne folder here, DVD root underscore PS4, and we have our character MTD and parts, you basically copy those, copy them into your Bloodborne folder. It'll ask, hey, are you good with this big dog? And I say, I am good with this big dog. There you go. And now you've installed it. Now there is actually a mod installer, like mod program. I don't, I'm always weird about that. I like full control. I like full control and I copy over what I want to copy over. And I've heard it's really good. So I, I have no ill will towards that. I just, I tend to like, I like control. Um, but yeah, this mod will, Massive, I wouldn't say massively, but it hugely improves performance. 
uh, because it disables those cloth physics that cause like a huge RAM spike. And so they actually have like an, uh, and so this is actually an example of that RAM spike that will happen. And I believe if you don't have enough uh, RAM, it will literally cause some of those spikes. Um, and then you can see how the RAM is lowered uh, because of that. So basically, it's just a nice little thing that isn't super noticeable. Like, you'll see the enemies not have cloth physics, and you're like, oh, okay. Um, but it's not a big deal. Uh, and for me, it's, it's worth the trade-off. Um, now, inside my visual tweaks, uh, there's not really anything in here I would recommend at the moment. <laughs> Uh, this was older, like the FPS boost, I don't really recommend anymore. Like it removes a lot of stuff. So I would only recommend the FPS boost if there's no other option. Like if you want, I think if you're on Steam Deck, the FPS boost would be a good one. Um, but quite honestly, there's an FPS boost by by Bach. That, I can never say the name, but uh, fantastic modder, fantastic reshade. Uh, but they have their own FPS boost that doesn't remove all the geometry. So I that's an optional one that uh, I would recommend. Uh, yeah, that's the cinematic reshade I've tried, the reshade old. Yeah, if no draw params. And then here's the FPS boost. It says, F boosts FPS without removing any geometry. Overrides or can be overridden by FromSoftServe's FPS boost. Yes, so it removes dynamic shadows, light sources, special effects, winds, and reflected objects. Yeah, so... It basically doesn't touch the geometry, but it, it disables a lot of other things, um, which works out pretty well. Um, so if you were gonna install this, uh, it's a very similar install process. You basically just extract it, easy peasy lemon squeezy, which I think I've already said like four times, but don't worry about it. And this is another one where, uh, ah, so this is how they packaged it. So this one, you might be wondering, where do these folders go? So if you want to install uh, his FPS boost, which will disable anything with my mod, because uh, it, it, it controls the same file, so I don't recommend doing this if you have my remaster project. It will not uh, work together at all. Uh, it's definitely either or. Uh, this goes inside your map folder. That's where all these are stored. So you would just copy these, paste them into your map folder, and then overwrite when asked, and now you'll have the FPS boost by him. Uh, I don't recommend it if you have my remaster mod. I don't, um, kind of an either or thing, but if you need performance, thank you for watching. Uh, I will see you on the next video or next stream, uh, and check the links in the description for the mods that I looked at and installed and the specific build of Shad PS4 I'm using here. Uh, and that way you can get the supreme Bloodborne experience, uh, as possible. And, uh, yeah, thank you for watching. Thank you.